I'm going to run an example, some examples using that MATLAB function deconv wiener. So here is this program in MATLAB in the image processing toolbox. Um, I'm going to first read in this cameraman image. Oops. And this is the original. And we blur it with a Gaussian blur and add a little bit of noise. Okay. So next thing I'll do is to uh, compute the average uh, noise to power ratio. And that is actually shown here. Then I'll apply the um, deconv wiener function using a constant value of k, the value of k I've got here. So this is the reconstructed image using that. And then finally I'll apply the deconv wiener function using the actual noise and signal um, spectrum. And this is the result of that. So just showing, comparing those two um, it produces much better if you know the actual um, spectrum at all frequencies you can do better than using a constant value of K here. Okay let's take another example um, here is a um, motion blur degradation and it's expressed as a integration of the original image over a streak um, or trajectory defined by x0 of t and y0 of t. So just moving in a straight constant velocity over a time t, this would be our trajectory here. So the point spread function would look like a linear streak like this. And MATLAB has a uh, function again that will generate this type of point spread function if you provide a length in pixels and an angle. Uh, let's see here. So So if I provide, let's say, a length of, I don't know, 10 and an angle of 45, I get a function that looks like this. So let me spread it out a little bit more. So as you can see, it um, is a streak in, at an angle of 45 degrees, um, pretty narrowly uh, concentrated around that diagonal line here. Okay, so I'll do another example on the cameraman using this uh, degradation function. And this is the code here. So I'll read in the cameraman, add noise to it. Um, no, first I blur it, then I add the noise. Compute the true signal to noise ratio. Here's my estimated signal to noise ratio. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so here is the original, the blurred, and the noisy. The true uh, k is this, and the estimated k is this, based on the corrupted image. Okay, so then I um, apply the deconvolution with the constant value of k, and I get this here. So not a perfect reconstruction, but definitely much sharper than I started this degraded function I started with. Now, if you didn't know the blurring function, well, say for a motion blur, but you knew it was a motion blur, you could try um, applying a de deconvolution with uh, different trial degradation functions, namely, you could try um, various values of length and theta 
construct the degradation function and try to deconvolve the image with that and visually inspect the results to see which one gives you the best results. One more example I'll look at now is super resolution. And here we want to reconstruct a high resolution image using multiple low resolution images. And this has applications and things like this. If we had a um, low resolution camcorder, for example, that gave us a sequence of images of a scene, we want to produce a higher quality, higher resolution uh, still image, for example. Or um, things like um, synthetic zooming, if we have surveillance images, or perhaps converting a low res video signal such as NTSC to a high res signal such as HDTV. So you'd think that this wouldn't be possible due to the Nyquist theorem uh, because we don't have enough information with this low resolution image. But um, our approach is to generate more samples by using shifted versions of the original. So this is a um, figure from a tutorial article on super resolution showing um, sort of a uh, conceptual uh, uh, process here where you take low resolution images using a camera, um, for example on a grid like this, but if you take multiple images these samples may be shifted slightly with respect to each other. So effectively you're getting a much higher density of samples than from a, a single image. So if you can um, figure out the, the actual shifting of these samples, you can reconstruct a higher resolution image from that. So again, the process looks like this. We, we register our low resolution images together, interpolate them onto a higher resolution grid, and then restore it and do some noise removal. This is an example from that uh, article. Um, low resolution image here, high, high resolution result here. I ran this code on some images I took of a newspaper, um, 20 low resolution images, as you can see here, um, and this produced this higher resolution uh, result. Um, this one's 1024 by 1024. I started with 256 by 256. Let me just show you. Um, it's hard to see these images, but I'm going to show you the uh, 20 original images. That's the first one, second, third, fourth. So as I step through it, you can see the slight shifts from image to image. And then here is our high resolution result. Let me just blow up one of these areas so you can compare them. Uh, let's say this part right here and the corresponding part here. And I'll make them both the same size. Okay, so those are about the same size. So you can compare that portion of the image. You know, here it's not readable, but here it, it is kind of barely readable. So that's the kind of things you can do with super resolution to restore images.